Ladies and gentlemen, this is David Maricatani with my good friend Mark Ostrander. We are weighing in episode 185, brought to you by USA Wrestling, the national governing body for wrestling in the United States, and sponsored by Nike Wrestling. Go to athleteps.com for all your Nike and USA Wrestling branded wrestling gear. Mark, I know you were in the man cave this weekend, locked and loaded, watching 10s, watching 12s, updating me. I'm texting you while I'm doing the 12s. This is this is candy and Christmas. For, it's our time of the year. Yep, what a great weekend for everybody. Uh, so let's get into what we're going to do today. We got a lot to talk about. We'll go through it real quick. Uh, there's so much that happened projections, what we think is going to happen, what we think the seeds could possibly be. So let's get started. I'm excited. Yep, for sure. So what we're going to do is go through this by weight, and we're going to try to hit three or four things. First of all, the results from the Big Ten, results of the Big 12, how we see wild cards going in the top eight seeds. What you guys, if you're watching, this is the second coaches poll. Okay, so there'll be a, another coaches poll that comes out on Wednesday, which will be the final one, but that's going to come out after the brackets are posted. They will use that last coaches poll load to put the brackets together. Before we get into this, I want to just, you know, do you, you want to talk a minute real quick just about the Big Tens and Big Twelves in general? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, let's talk about the Big Twelves, David. You and Hardell uh, were on the mics for the Big Twelves. Uh, very impressive. I uh, got a lot of shout outs on my phone from people listening to you, how good of a job you guys did. You kept them interested in the wrestling. Uh, I think the Big Ten tries to do that, but I thought I thought ESPN Plus did a fabulous job with the Big 12s this year, and you guys knocked it out of the park. Man, I, I, I appreciate that. I respect that a lot. Uh, we got a ton of encouragements in our DMs and our, our IG, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. I got to give credit to Chris Forbes, Brian Piccolo, Alex Steen, and Terry Pack. Those guys do the heavy lifting. They're doing, you know, mats one, two, three, and four. And it's a one-man booth. And I had actually arranged for two-man booths this year because that's a lot easier. You and I have done play-by-play -play together, and two is easier than one. But because of COVID restrictions, they wouldn't let an extra person down there. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, experience, Mark. My producer, Todd, who did a great job for us, was actually in Kansas City. So there was a couple times where our feed went out and then he was sending us stuff and we were able to actually ask for stuff. Like they had a graphic of how many guys were left in the finals. I said, can you add to the graphic how many guys are left in the consolations? Because you and I know that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. I will give me and Hardell one shout out about our, at 745 on Saturday night, we predicted it would come down to the Demas Ferrari match on Sunday, that if Demas won and Ferrari won, that it would probably be bonus points that would decide it. And if not, it would be a tie. So we predicted that literally about 24 hours ahead of time. It was crazy. It came down to that. The energy there is really cool. Uh, and I'm sure people don't think of this, but Tulsa is a really, it's an awesome town. It's a huge wrestling town. They have a, a, a sports bar right across the street where shout out to Joel Kester, the sports commission. Uh, director there, Tulsa Sports Commission, literally set us up where we could eat lunch and watch the Big Tens without having to walk all over the place, and then we could go right back for the finals. And I saw your son out there. We had a you know great time seeing him. And it, it's an awesome experience. I love doing it. I, I think you should come down and do it with us next year, man. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'd like to do that. Um, but then I'd have to give up my man cave watching Iowa, the Big Tens, <laughs> Uh, Michigan, Penn State, and then I can also watch, you know, Oklahoma State, Wyoming, <laughs> you and I, I can watch that from here also. Kind of hard to want to give up all that, but we'll see what we can do. You can't lose. Whatever decision you make is a win. <laughs> it's just a matter of which one. Agreed. So, real, yeah, so just thank you to everybody that supported us. It's a little bit of a grind in the sense that it's, it's a few hours, but talking about wrestling is something clearly that I love to do. Hardell is as good as it gets. I will ride with that guy doing play-by-play -play seven days a week and twice on Sunday. Great energy. And, and that guy could probably be the, the governor of Oklahoma tomorrow if he wanted to be. There, he does. He knows no strangers. Everyone's a friend of that man. So shout out Hardell. All right, so here are the coaches' rankings. 
at 125, please focus on the first four columns. Those are supported by or sorted by rankings and not conference. The conferences are to the right, which we'll see how everything broke down. So if we go to the Big Ten results, no surprise here that Spencer Lee wins, but followed by Schroeder. Foley had a good tournament. Heinzelman takes fourth. DiAugustino fifth. Robbie Howard punches his ticket at six. Dylan Ragason seven. Patrick McKee eight. We go to the Big 12s. Brody Teske gets lefty headlock for four, comes back and wins a barn burner of a match, eight to seven. Taylor Lamont second, Cardinal third. Danny Vega is dangerous at four. Uh, Trevor Master Giovanni is fifth. So what Flo has done for us, which is great because I was on a plane this morning, they said, here's the seven wild cards available. And here's are the guys that are going to the short list on here. Cronin, Barnett, Cardani, Gutierrez, Fippen, Kaler, Ryder, Rose, Camacho, Storm, Warner, and Terrakina. Uh, their predictions are Cronin, Barnett, Cardani, Storm, Kaler, Rose, and Terrakina. Here's the, la the logic and rationale. Why don't you take a crack at this? Let's start with uh, what your impressions were because you saw the Big Tens. I only saw finals matches. Who impressed you? Who maybe wrestled a, a, maybe not up to their seed? And uh, then I can talk about the Big 12s. Uh, let's just leave Spencer out of the conversation because he's on a planet that I haven't seen before. He does get taken down right off the get-go in the finals and then turns around and puts up 21 points. Four yeah. minutes into the match. Uh, he's just he's just something else. Schroeder wrestled really well all weekend. Uh, and, you know, he was ranked the top four early in the year, David. Correct. So he had some early losses that he wasn't, just wasn't wrestling very well. And then I right. think it kind of came back to him. He figured out, you know, I got to get back to work. Uh, this isn't going to be easy. And he did that this weekend. Uh McKee surprised me. He did not have a great tournament. I thought he would probably do a little bit better. Ragason, I've been kind of high on most of the year at 25 because he came out like a world beater early on. Uh, I think he is cutting some weight, David. I think if he's up on somebody, it doesn't affect him. But if he gets down or it's really close, you can see it affected him a little bit. And that's going to make, you know, some issues that, you know, if he gets a you know, at the, the national tournament. Foley wrestled well. Barnett, not so much. So, I mean, it's kind of hit and miss. Uh, I was kind of surprised there's going to be some guys getting wild cards there. Yep. Um, let's, not sure let's, who yet. Yeah, let's talk about Big 12s quickly and then project top eight seeds. Teske beats Lamont. Big win for Teske. His only loss is to Courtney. Lamont, I think, was undefeated. So they're handcuffed together. I think we agree Spencer Lee is the one. I don't see why they would change this order of Hildebrandt two, Latona three, Courtney four, Camacho five. I'm guessing that's how it's going to go. I think Teske goes six. Okay. I think Schroeder will end up going seven. That would be my guess. And I, I would guess Rayvon Foley is going to probably end up eight, would, don't you? Because it was all those big uh, ten guys. I think Lamont could be eight, David. Uh, because he wrestled a good match in the finals. He has one loss on the year. Uh, Foley has three, maybe four losses on the year. That's a good point. I, I could they're, see eight, they're eight and nine, though, right? They're, one, they're probably the eight, nine, which... Yeah, and I'm not sure they want to be. I, I think they'd rather be 10 and 11. Yes. But, uh, somebody's yeah. going to have to be eight and nine, and I think that's what's going to happen. Yep. This weight more so than any other, I think you just desperately want to be in the bottom half of the bracket. Okay, we go to 33. So here's here's where the rankings were. And we'll go to the big 10s. RBY 1, DeSanto 2, Bird 3, Cannon 4, Berg 5, Rundle 6. And then we go to the big 12s. Uh, I'll start. Tony Madrigal was 3-7 and seven coming into the tournament. The 6-seed lost first round. The 7-seed lost first round. So the semis were two unseeded guys. Uh, Madrigal makes the finals, does punches his ticket. Zach Redding was actually really impressive. Moses Schwartz won the Big 12s last year. Dayton's going to be the number one seed in the national tournament. I'll tell you what I saw in the finals. RBY feels like he's kind of separated himself a little bit from DeSanto. Uh, and the rest of this, you know, Bird, 
Bird did himself some favors, and then, you know, Cannon as well. So Fix, I think, stays one, RBY two, DeSanto three. I am absolutely convinced Corbin Myers will be the four seed. I think Philippi will probably be the five seed. If this holds, I think Matt Schmidt will be the six seed, and I think Lucas Bird will be the seven. And I, it'll be interesting what they do with Michael McGee because he lost one match. He took third. He's actually going to need a wild card. But I'll bet you that he's a top 10 seed. Yeah, I could see him beating eight, eight or nine without a doubt. Uh, so, I mean, I think that weight is pretty cut and dry when you get into the top eight seeds, David. Uh, I would agree with you. DeSanto has um, has had more issues with, you know, RBY than there's still good matches, but he has not found a way. It doesn't seem that close right now. So, but RBY has really come on. You know, I kind of thought Dayton would not have a problem this year at this weight bracket. I'm starting to think RBY will give Dayton all he wants and then some, so. Yeah, and this weight was really tough back in November when we thought Stevon Misik and Suriano were in this weight. This weight oh, would have yes. been insane. Yep. Sammy Alvarez doesn't wrestle here, so that's a big uh, notable. Kyle Biscaglia, I, I don't know data, but I talked to people very close to the program and said they did a bunch of wrestle-offs late in the year, and I'm not sure everybody's super happy about it, but he didn't even get to wrestle in the Big 12s. Yep. So, all right, let's go to 41. So here's where the coaches poll was. 41 in the Big Tens, Ironman 1, Nick Lee 2, Rivera 3, Red 4. I'm going to come back to you on this, but I heard the semi-Nick Lee, Sebastian Rivera match might have been the best match all year. Uh, Ironman beats Lee basically on riding time. I think they'll make some adjustments, and it'll be interesting to see how that goes. 41 here, Dom Demas, Ian Parker. I might have buried the lead. Congratulations to Oklahoma University for being tied for the Big 12 wrestling title. Absolutely insane. I got to say this real quick. Both sides were complaining. OU's complaining because O State had six more first-round matches, and O State's complaining because they outplaced Oklahoma in seven of the ten weights. Here's my point. They both wrestled great. OU was just decking people on the backside. The Mantonona brothers were just taking names and numbers and heads. and O State is banged up and still found a way. They were two points away from winning the tournament. And I think it was confirmed they somehow lost a team point uh, the first night or else, you know, they would have been one point up. But really good performance by OU. I mean, wrestled way above their seeds. You know, I mean, Madrigal is probably the biggest difference, right? He was three and seven and gets second place points. But that – and I'm telling you, as a commentator – it hasn't been like that. It's usually just been the Oklahoma State University Open. You know, like they win it and everybody else is fighting for second. So it was compelling. But Dom Demas, the reason Dom Demas had to win going into the finals for them to have a chance because they weren't going to win 25 and they weren't favored to win 49. And o St Oklahoma State was going to beat them in those weights. And that's actually what happened. Yep. So... So let's talk about the seeds here, and then we can go to the wild card. We skipped the wild cards at 33. The wild cards at 33, it looks like they think will be McGee, Sullivan, Rich, Decatur, Bianchi, and Van Fleet. Let's go to 41. So this is something you and I were talking about. I'm just going to read this verbatim. The most controversial pick will be Real Woods. The Sanford standout returned, finished in a position that would earn him an allocation. However, he didn't have the four-match requirement to help Woods hit this. Stanford arranged two matches for Woods over the weekend against Jose Landon of Cal State Bakersfield. So, Mark, you and I are trying to figure out a couple things here. Number one, we didn't know you could schedule matches after the conference tournament was over. And number two, since he has five matches now, is he an automatic qual? Why does he need a wild card if he finished second? Well, here's what I think is going to happen, David. And I know there's going to be people upset about this. But let's look back on what's happened to him in the last year. Um, Stanford dropped their wrestling program. This is the last year. All those kids are being recruited right now. He decided to do his studies this year. Stanford is one of the top schools in the, in the world 
for getting an education. And so he's doing what he should be doing, which is getting his credits, getting his education. I think he was talked into coming back out at the end of the year. Uh, he had pretty much dominated that weight last year. He gets pinned in the finals of the conference tournament. So he's two and one, didn't have enough matches in, but automatically qualified. I think they were under the assumption that if you automatically qualified, didn't matter if you had the four matches and the four matches under what I thought was for wild cards, not for the regular allocation, but they said, no, you have to win your conference tournament if you're less than four matches or you do not qualify. I'm not sure there's a rule that says you can't have a dual meet after the conference tournament. But they didn't have a dual meet. They just had two guys wrestle. Well, nobody else could make weight that weekend. Okay, uh, Mark. I mean, I'm just saying, David, I don't know. I don't know the rules. I hope he gets to wrestle in it. I think he's been through enough. Let him wrestle. He's one of the best kids. He's one I'm of the best kids. Agreed. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying, A, it wasn't a dual meet, and B... I don't think a lot of people knew you could do this. You and I are fairly dialed in, and I had no idea you could do this. But I, did, I didn't either. So anyway, so here are the results. Jaden Ironman is going to be the number one seed. Nick Lee is going to be the number two seed. Sebastian Rivera is going to be the number three seed. I think Chad Red will be the four seed, but it could be Dom Demas. I think Tariq Wilson and Ian Parker, in some order, are going to be the five, six seed. Okay. I don't know about, and I think Zach Sherman would be the seven, and I think Alan Hart might might be the eight. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna change your picks just a little bit, David. Okay. I think I think Tariq Wilson could be the number four or five seed. And I yeah, I do no. I I do think that Chad Red will get that other seed up top, but I think Tariq Wilson being undefeated this year, has not lost, uh, will oh, be five, that's a good point. four or five. Dom Demas does have a loss this year. I think he will be in the six with probably, I'm guessing, Zach Sherman or Ian Parker uh, being the Is, seventh seed. I'm just not who, sure. So who gets – okay, so go Ironman one, Lee two, Rivera three, Tariq four. I'm, I'm, I'm with that program. Who's five, yeah. Red or Demas? Because – Red is fourth in a conference, and Demas is a conference champion. That, that's a good point. Uh, and I'm not sure who they're going to put at four or at five. I'm going to go Chad Red because he lost to the – well, you know, his only losses have been to the top three kids in the country. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that. But we wouldn't be shocked if it goes the other way. No. And no. it wouldn't be a crime if it went the other way. No. So, so they're five, six, and like you said, then I think it's Zach Sherman, and I think – Alan Hart probably drops to eight or maybe a little lower. He was in the driver's seat for a top four seed, you know, and this, and he didn't, he didn't get it done at the, at the conference tournament. So, okay. 49. So we'll talk about the wild cards first, six wild cards available. Max Murin, Yaya Thomas, Andrew Alirez. Those are super obvious ones. So I don't know what was wrong with Andrew Alirez because I was there. He wrestled for one second. And we missed it because we we're just talking about so many different things going on. And then we had to go back we're like, holy hell, Andrew Lears, who was the number two seed, that helped Oklahoma tremendously because Mitch Moore made the finals. Now, I mean, he yeah. earned it. He wrestled it. But, I mean, that's not a match he's predicted to win. Um, but Murin lost. Ridge Lovett probably had the most surprisingly upside performance of he was I saw the graphic he was the only number seven seed to make the finals and then Venz made it as a six seed so Nebraska had two guys really overperform their seeds and we'll get to Venz in a minute yep. but from what I mean Murin Yaya Lira's Casey Cobb those four are pretty obvious those are going to be wild cards correct uh, I would imagine yes okay Big Ten Sasso one Love it two Van Brill Block is store Rooks Perry Yaya those are all hammers there. And you go down to eight. Boo, Mitch, uh, Kyle Parco, man, this kid. So Fres there's some dudes on Fresno teams that are going to get recruited because, you know, they're dropping the program. This yep. dude's a freshman. He went 21-2 and two last year as a redshirt, and this year doesn't count. This guy's got four years left. He beat Jared Dagan twice. 
he's a he he's got some Greco background. This guy would rather throw you than know you, and just awesome <laughs> attitude. I mean, just a really fun kid to watch. Tristan Lara, uh, Northern Iowa guy, uh, and then Jensen. So let's talk about seeds. Okay. Before awesome. we do that, David. Yeah. A shout out to 149 in the Big 12s. Absolutely a outstanding finals match. That could have went either way. Oh, that was a lot of fun to watch. Mitch Moore and Boo. Both of them wrestled. Oh, without a doubt. They if Mitch Moore they won that thing, show. If Mitch Moore won that thing, Boomer Nation was gonna lose their mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a great match, though. It really was. It was yeah, it was. It was great. Oh, I would have loved to have called that one. That one was exciting. So that was anyway. So this is a very interesting weight class because O'Connor is number one in most of the, the rankings, but Sasso is number one in the coaches poll. So I think Sasso is going to be seated number one at nationals because the we do the rankings. We did them for a bunch of years. They have no impact on the seating. And I'm not saying it should or shouldn't. That could be a debate for an entire podcast. But the point is they don't. Okay. Correct. So I think Sasso's one, O'Connor's two, Mahler's three, Llewellyn's four. Here's where it gets tricky. Murin can't be five. Mikey Carr didn't wrestle. Griffin Perriott placed seventh so it can't be him i mean ridge levitt's on the short list i mean i think andonian probably moves up i mean i do too my goodness five through eight seeds could be anybody here you're right and i have i only i think andonian's gonna get one of them so he's uh, what, probably by default he's probably the five probably because if you go through it Murin lost, Carr lost, Perriott lost, Andonian lost to, to O'Connor. That doesn't hurt him. Uh, Lamer lost, Josh Heil lost, Thomas lost, Store lost, Milner won, but he beat Josh Heil. Does Mitch Moore get the sixth seed at Nationals and Jaden Abbas get the seven? Uh, possibly. It wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock you. But it would have shocked you two weeks ago if we said that's how oh. it was going to shake out. Well, well, yeah. I mean. That's crazy. That's huge yeah, I, for Oklahoma. That's huge yep. for Oklahoma because they got a bunch of really good guys, but they don't have a bunch of all-American kind of guys. And they, they get another top eight seed. That helps them tremendously. Just by what happened this weekend, David, Deegan could have been probably the five or six seed at the national tournament. Now there's no way he can be. So well, no, you know, it can't. Yeah, that's that's how important this week is. Was you know, obviously you're not going to know some of the upsets, but we had talked about this on previous episodes. We knew things were going to happen in the conference tournament. There were going to be a lot of upsets. Yeah, uh, I think one thing that shocked me is, you know, basically nine of the number one seeds at the Big Ten won. That doesn't happen very often. I lost a chicken wing bet to Terry Pack. He said that. We, we set the over-under at one and a half, and I took, I thought, two or more, and only, you know, 97 was the only one. I thought there was a chance at uh, 41, uh, 74, I thought there was a chance, and then at 97, I thought it would go the way it went. So, yeah. anyway, so look, guys, if you're watching, listening, look, be be very vigilant about the seeds five through eight here. I'd say six through eight. I think I'm pretty comfortable Antonian's going to be the five. Okay, yeah. so six to eight is going to be in six to 11 is going to be interesting because if the seeds hold six wrestles, 11, seven wrestles, 10, eight wrestles, nine, you're talking about a bunch of guys that are frankly on their own tier there. And that's a matchup dependent thing. I don't I'll tell you what would be fascinating is if Bryce Andonian wrestles Mitch Moore because they were at the same school. Yeah, just saying that. So, yeah. OK. 157, start with the wild cards. The most, the predicted ones, Vandermeer, Hartman, Ruffin, DeVos, Jacob Wright, Martin. I watched DeVos and, and Wright wrestle. They look like national qualifier kind of guys. Vandermeer was in a really good conference and only took two. I, I can buy these guys. Wyatt Sheets is the one that, you know, it's just, he's banged up. He's as good as all these guys and probably better than a lot of them, but he's, he's nowhere near 100%. Then 
that also killed Oklahoma State. He didn't score any points. Sure. And, and he was the Big 12 runner-up last year. Yep. Okay. 57, Deacon one. That dude's on his own level. Caleb Young, two. Brayton Lee, three. Chase Saldati with the great tournament takes fourth. Berge, or Coleman, five. Berge, six. Will Lawan with the disappointing eighth. David Carr doing David Carr things. Jarek Fanick, Justin Thomas, Cade DeVos, Jacob Wright. Let's talk about the seeds here. I think it's Deacon one, Heidley two, Carr three, Delvecchia four. Caleb Young probably stays five. Did Brayton Lee took third, we said? He did he'll take stay, third. He'll yeah. stay six. Now it gets interesting. I think Jake Hughes might get the seventh seed. I, I think that's very possible. Because Kendall Coleman took fifth, and, you're, and Will Lewan took seventh or eighth, and Bergie yep. took sixth. Frannick was the runner-up to David Carr, so I, I could see, I could see JQ seven for sure. And if I had to guess, I would guess it stays Coleman. Coleman, but if it's not Coleman, I think it's Frannick. What do you think? I, I would agree. I think that sounds about, you know, North Dakota State had, they had some kids that really wrestled well this weekend in the Big 12s. Uh, so did so did Wyoming. So, you know, shouts out to both those programs. They did a phenomenal yeah. job. Yeah, hey, Wyoming had the most finalists. So shout out to Mark Ranch for yep. the finals. They didn't yep. get it done in the finals, but they were actually mathematically alive to win the tournament with 10 matches to go. And we know a lot of these guys, but it was nice to see – because Terry Pack was a good, you know, he was my assistant coach when I was coaching at Iowa Central. Yeah. So I knew I knew Cody Pack when he was three years old, four years old, five years old, running around the school, yeah. you know. And now he's an assistant coach at North Dakota. It was fun to watch him in the corner. He's he gets excited. He's, you know, shout out to him. He did a great job. Uh, yeah. 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 And I, you know, I. I have a very good relationship with Terry and Cody as well. Grab dinner with Cody, and it's, it's cool, like you said, to see him growing up. Okay, seven wild cards, 165. Makai, Braun Eagle, Kennedy Monday, Andrew Sparks, a guy we're super high on, a bunch of other names here. Those four guys and, and the other three, I'm, I'm guessing those make the most sense. The four, those four seem like a, a pure lock to get a wild card. 65 yep. at the Big Tens, Marinelli one, Ethan Smith two, Amin three, Peyton Rob four, Ninehouse five, Jake Tucker six, Ferranti seven, Joe Lee is probably the one surprising to me. Ton of hype in the preseason. It takes eight. Yep. So 65 here. The upset of the tournament, Luke Weber beats Travis Whitlake. Frankly, thought he had to beat twice. And, you know, but he gets it done. Cole Moody second, Whitlake third. This is a disaster. For seeding. Okay. <laughs> so let's let's start I, out with this. Okay. Shane yeah, Griffith can't be the one because he lost. Makai Lewis can't be the one because he didn't wrestle. Travis Whitley can't be the one because he lost. Marinelli comes off the board to one because he only had two matches. So he's the one. Correct. Valencia is the two. Correct. I think Shane Griffith is the three. Incorrect. Who's the three? Makai. Okay. Injury default. All those losses are injury default. He's banged up. I don't know if he's going to be healthy for the tournament, but I think they're going to take that over a seven to one loss. Uh, by, this uh, is very interesting because I, I disagree Griffith. pretty strongly about this. Uh, I think Griffith will get the three, but so now. And here's what I don't think. I think Wenzel's going to get the four. Because Wenzel won the conference Mackay's could, in. Could Wenzel get the three? And I, and I didn't even think about that. Well. He has one loss to Bullard. That's his loss this year. But he avenged it either head-to-head he -head or by placing over him at the tournament. He did. No, Wenzel could get the three. But so I'm saying I think Wenzel, I think Wenzel and Griffith are both above Mackay. Okay. I mean, it, clearly there's no right or wrong. We're going to know in 48 hours, but sure. as we're talking now, then I think, I think Makai's the five. Maybe Ethan Smith is the five. Uh, possibly. 
I think that's your top six. Uh, One way or another. Yeah. Bronicle took ninth. He's not, he's not getting top eight seed. As Probably good a year not. He had, I don't think he is. What about Missouri? Can they get a top eight seed? Keegan O'Toole has not lost this year. He's going to be in the top 10. He's going to be in the top 10 after this weekend. I think he's top eight. I really do. I think he shoots up. So Zach Hartman won his conference. Kennedy Monday. So let's go through this. O'Toole can pass schedule. He can pass Kennedy Monday. He can pass Jake Keating. Probably doesn't, but that's enough. He's in. Yeah. He's probably in worse nine. Yep. Well, no, eight, because Bronigal's going to be below them. Yes. Yeah. I think he's the eight. I'll say he's the eight. Okay. And he might be higher, but I think he's in the top eight. Wow, wow, wow. Great weight. Yep. Uh, Hardell was giving me trouble. At one point, I just had to take a breath. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is awesome. Okay, 174, seven wild cards. Flitz, Kaufman, Runyon, Turley, Manton, Nona, Surratt, Broderson, Kratiger, Marcelli, Picks, Flitz, Kaufman. So Anthony Mantanona makes you want to pull your hair out sometimes, but that dude is dangerous. I mean, he would not be a fun draw. Like if you're the seven or six or eight seed, I don't think you want any part of that. 74, Kemmer, Starachi, Starachi beat Labriola. Labriola bounces back for third. Massa, four, Romero, five, Donnell Washington, six. I'd have to look at the pre-seeds, but that feels pretty chalky to me from what I remember. Uh, Demetrius Romero looked good. Jackson Hemauer makes the finals. Hayden Hastings beat Plot again. Plot takes fourth. Mantonona, Surratt, five, six. Okay. This seems fairly clear to me. Kemmer's one, correct? Correct. Karachi's two? I'm going to say yes. Demetrius Romero's three? Yes. Mikey Labriola's four? Yes. Logan Massa's five? Yes. Hayden Hastings, I'm sorry, uh, Caleb Romero six? Yes. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to find another champion that we're missing there, and I can't seem to find one. Nope. So Aiden yep. Hastings is seven. Yep. Bullard will drop because he didn't place it. And then I think Donnell Washington did Peyton Mako won. He didn't win the Mac. McNally did. Yep. McNally could be eight. And that sounds about right. Okay. Do not do not try Anthony Manton on in the first round. Just don't do that if you can help it. And you know, and I, I don't, I don't know if you got to watch one seventy four, David. Kemmer, Kemmer, looked, Kemmer looked really good. He looked a level above him. Yep. Okay, let's go with the wild cards at eighty four. Bronigal, my goodness, Bronigal, Rocky Jordan, <laughs> Batista. So I haven't seen these guys. Like I got done at ten o'clock last night. Packed my bags. Got up at five thirty this morning. Colbre, Harvey, Walton, Reyes, Cruz, Darian Roberts, Belshay, Bronigal, I agree with. Jordan, I agree with. Colbre, I agree with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All <laughs> There's right. Some okay. good kids looking for wild cards there. Let me tell yes. you. Yeah, for sure. All right. Let's start with the big 10. Brooks, Venz, who you and I privately both picked to make the finals in the bottom side of the bracket. Can't prove it, but we were right. Posnanski, third. <laughs> Nelson Brands, who we thought would wrestle hard on the back, took fourth out of the eight, nine seed bracket spot. Weiler, five. Malchuski, six. Lion, seven. Owen Webster, eight. Super deep weight in uh, Big Ten. 84. Parker Keckheisen, Tate Samuelson. Gear, Clothier, Colbre. Okay. Let's seed this sucker. Okay. So people, for, if they forgot, Trent Heidley beat Hunter Bullen. Aaron Brooks is one, correct? Correct. I will make the argument that Louis Dupre should be second. He's undefeated. Yeah. It's not his fault what conference he wrestles in. And I, I, I will make that argument with you, David, but I think he will not be the number two seed. I think he will be the number three seed. Okay. It, it, this can go a couple matter. different. True. No, it, 
it doesn't matter if you're two or three. It really doesn't because they're going to be separated because Bolin, who you don't want on your side of the bracket either besides Aaron Brooks, you know, you, I think you may have the two best guys on the top side of the bracket. Well, this could go a couple different ways. Let's let's walk through a couple scenarios real quick. We got to keep it moving. Okay. Brooks one. I'll go through my scenario first. To pray to Hydley three, Bowling four. That's the two two best guys all year on the same side of the bracket. You could also go Brooks one, Hydley two, Bowling three. To pray four. Okay. Now what that does is that creates Bowling Hydley number round seventeen. They'll be on the same side of the bracket. Keck is in his five, okay? Yes. I think Taylor Venz is six. Agreed. Okay. Um, seven. I'm going to go with Samuelson. He is seven. And then I don't know if it's Poz Poznanski because it's a bunch of Big Ten and Big 12 guys. It is. Uh... So it's him or Gear. Where did we put Venz at? Six. Six, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I think gear I'm, seven. Maybe, maybe. I don't I know. I think the he Rutgers, is. Rutgers kid had a really good tournament. Well, I think they're seven, eight. Yep. I'll cop out and say that, and we got eight minutes left. Okay. 97 wild cards. Sloan, which was insane. We'll get to that. Panola, Robluski, Hoffman, Renan, Janzer. Wow. Sloan, Panola. Yeah. Okay. I, I can see these guys. <clears throat> okay. So Sloan gets decked in the backside semi by Iowa State, which was, and then he defaulted out, which absolutely made the turn in for Oklahoma. Because Woodley picked up pinpoints. And when it happened at the time, we're like, that might be the difference. Yep. Because even if he wrestles Sloan, he probably doesn't pin him, even if he beats him. Sure. Okay. All right. Big 10 results. Amin, Schultz, Warner, Caffey, Davison, Beard, Panola, Janzer. Feels pretty chalky at the top. I think most people that really love wrestling would pick an Olympian to win the tournament. So I don't think that's a huge upset. Uh, for, so this was my favorite way to call the whole tournament. So Ferrari, Buchanan beats Noah Adams three times. Ferrari is leading cheers during the finals, trying to get to a major to win the tournament. Thought he was going to do it, kind of got relaxed on the edge and got double legs and ends up winning by six. Ferrari won, Buchanan two, Adams three, Coleman four, Woodley five, Sloan six. Let's seed this sucker because this is going to be fascinating. Give me a shot this one, Dave. I'm going to start this one. I'm going to say Amin's going to be number one. I'm going to say Schultz will be two. Norfleet will be three. I think Warner will be four. I am going to go with Bonacorsi will be number five. I think Ferrari will be number six. I think then you put Noah Adams in at seven. Where did you put Ferrari? Ferrari at, six? At, well, I put him. Yes. Noah Adams can't be above Buchanan. Yes. No, he cannot be above Buchanan. No, I didn't. Okay, then Buchanan will be seven, and then I'm going to put Noah Adams in at eight. No Cam Caffey? No. Okay, no. I'm going to tell you who's going to be That's in just, the top. I'm just – that's my predictions. I don't know if they're right or wrong. Yep. Obviously, this weekend kind of uh, turned this weight upside down. Okay. I'm going to go – I Amin one, Schultz two. I'm going to go Norfleet three. Okay. I did that. Yep, we're saying. Warner four. Yep. Bonacorsi five. Is that what you said? I did. Ferrari six. Buchanan seven. Yep. You have Caffey eight. Uh, I had uh. No Adams eight. No Adams eight. I, uh, I think Rocky Elam might be eight. Okay. We'll see. I think uh, Adams, Caffey, uh, no uh, Rocky are eight, nine, ten, some yep. order. 
Okay. Heavyweight. Gable Stevenson did some Gable Stevenson things. Let's go. Isley, Luffman, Birchmeyer, Shiler, Austin Harris, Spalding, McKernan, Robertson, et cetera. I don't know that I have a big argument there. Carter Isley did not have a good tournament, but I think he probably gets in. Okay. Gable Stevenson, we got four minutes. Gable Stevenson respond or Stevenson responded to uh, Mason Paris and said, You can't run forever. Said it was nice seeing you after he beat him 12 to 4. Went savage on Twitter. <laughs> Stevenson won Paris wow. 2, Cassiope 3, Kirkfleet 4, Lance 5, Orndorf, Hilger, Luffman, heavyweight. Gremel avenges Big 12s last year, beats Andrews. Uh, Hendrickson third, Josh Heinzelman fourth, Mets fifth, Isley six. Let's seed it. Gable Stevenson one, Mason Paris two, Tony Cassiope. I'm going to say Stencil is three. Okay. Cassiope four. Oh no, Stencil three, Colton Schultz four. Cassiope five, Gremel six, Jordan Wood seven, Ethan Laird eight. Oh, that's. Interesting how you did that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say Gable one, Mason two, Tony three. I'm going to say Stencil's four. I'm going to say Schultz is five. I'm going to say Gremel six. Uh, then I'm going to go with Woods. Jordan Wood. And yeah. And then I'll go, it really doesn't matter. Uh, well, I mean, Ethan I, Laird won the Mac. Yep. I'll go with Laird. I think we just – we flip-flopped a little bit where uh, Schultz is, okay? And the coach's ranking is wrong here. Schultz beat Gremmel head-to-head, so he has to be above him. So, okay. uh, yeah, I mean, you could see this staying literally the same. Stevenson, Paris, Cassiope, Stencil, flip, get Schultz back up above Gremmel. That's 5-6. Isley has a bad tournament, so Wood goes to 7. Luffman doesn't have a great tournament, so Laird goes to 8. So <sighs> – we got two minutes left. We need to we talk. Did per, we did pretty good, David. Yeah, we did good. How about the results of the uh, freestyle? Mateo Pelicone. So you can go on USA Wrestling, but let me pull this up here. Here's the final results. Suriano takes second. Tyler Graff takes third. Joey McKenna takes third. Pantaleo takes first. JB loses a, a very controversial close match to Chimizo takes second. McFadden takes second. Muhammad McBride takes sixth. Zahid, tech fall, tech fall, tech fall, beats Mark Hall. Mark Hall wrestled a Canadian, an American, a Canadian, an American, put a post out. I flew to Italy to wrestle four North American guys, which was pretty funny. <laughs> Miles Martin takes bronze. Patrick Downey takes fifth after withdrawing. So, and we don't have the results in front of us, but Greco and the women's had a really good day too. That was just the last day. Uh, and I got one minute left to click over. So we did this today. Where's my stop share screen? Um, here we go. Okay. We did this today. There's no Matt Chat guest because we're in our nationals. We will record Thursday, Mark, yep. after the brackets come out. And we will record Monday and probably give you guys some predictions. We want to thank you guys so much for watching and listening. I appreciate you guys putting up with me today. I am on low sleep and high caffeine. I promise to be better in three days. Thanks. Have a great day.